Hi, this is Rick DeLuca with the DeLuca Real Estate Group, and we're helping you navigate through your real estate questions. And I have Chris Bussey here with Guardian Mortgage. Thanks for being here, Chris. Thanks for having me, Rick. Appreciate it. Yeah. And so, Chris, uh, you're with Guardian Mortgage, which is a lender. Yes. So you, um, you do regular traditional loans as well as some other things, right? Yes, exactly. Yeah. At Guardian Mortgage, uh, we are a full service lender uh, doing standard conventional FHA, VA. But uh, because we are part of a bank, we do have portfolio lending available as well, where we can actually lend some of our own money and do construction lending and portfolio loans. So it's a really cool setup, a uh, great company and um, a great, uh, great file flow. Everything's been there four years now. It's been fabulous. Okay, excellent. Um, so we're seeing... Uh, these times are a little bit difficult for buyers. And I, I know like everybody's like, hey, the market's gonna crash, we're gonna see all this happening. But still, we're kind of in a similar environment we've been in for the past two, three years mm -hmm. with buyers in that it's tough sometimes to get uh, a home. Yep, affordability, major affordability, challenge. Affordability, yeah. yes. So we, we see low inventory, and then the other issue is affordability because of the higher Interest rates. Interest exactly. rates. So what we're seeing is some different ways to kind of overcome it. Uh, you know, before the sellers were like, hey, this is it. We're not fixing anything. We're not giving any concessions, anything like that. Things are changing mm -hmm. in that they are fixing things um, and that they are giving concessions. Absolutely. But the reason they're giving concessions is because it helps with this closing, the closing cost. Mm -hmm. And so... What we're seeing is the two the buy downs the buy down the, the temporary buy downs is so a big, we see big all, topic these days all these different terms and stuff mm -hmm. so buy downs what what is this uh, explain yeah. it to us sure. what, what are these buy downs yeah the what a buy down is is a temporary um, uh, a temporary reduced monthly payment on your mortgage uh, you'll hear the terms a uh, two one the most popular going to be a two one and a three two one buy down. And what that basically means is that you are getting a, a certain amount of money from the seller as a concession, which is then going into a separate account and just sitting there so that it can help supplement your monthly payment for that, uh, whether it be uh, two years or three years, depending on which program you're doing. Uh, the benefit of this is a lower monthly payment to the buyer, to the borrower, uh, over that two or three years. And with the idea that over that, that time period, you will hopefully interest rates will start to come back down eventually. You'll be able to refinance into something with a little bit more attractive interest rate, a little bit lower interest rate to have an overall lower fixed payment. So, okay. Go ahead if you had a, you had a question there. Okay. So, you get this money, and because typically seller concessions, you get it and just goes towards, towards this uh, um, closing cost. Correct. But this is different, you're saying, yes. because. Because uh, it, it, it's not just going and going straight to the lender, lender costs, and that's it. You're saying it actually goes into another account, yep. kind of like an escrow account? Essentially, yes. So the lender holds onto it. Yep. But whose money is it then? So like like the, the seller gives, I don't know, ten fifteen thousand dollars yep. $15,000 towards closing costs. And so you the lender gets it, and it sits in the escrow. So the, the money is the borrowers. Okay. The buyers. It, it stays in that account for them. And the way that money is used, we'll back up a minute to explain that a little bit further. Let's just say your interest rate that you locked was 6.5% on okay. a 30-year fixed rate mortgage. Your total monthly payment is based off of that 6.5%, the principal and interest of that loan. If you were doing a 3 2 one buy-down, that means that your, your monthly payment for the first year would be based on an interest rate of 3% less than that. So 3.5%. So oh, wow. it, your interest rate's not 3.5%, but your monthly payment is based off of a rate of 3.5%. So okay. let's just say that, that that monthly payment for that first year is $700 less than it would be normally. That $700 each month is going to come from that that account where that money's sitting. So it's just supplementing the monthly payment. Okay. The seller is essentially paying part of the monthly payment for the buyer each month for the first three years. So in that scenario, a three, two, one buy down, 3%, you're saving $700 per month for the first year on your monthly payment. The second year, it would go to a payment equivalent of 4.5%. 
the third year equivalent of five and a half percent, and then from then on out, it would be the normal payment based on the six and a half percent interest rate, meaning you utilized all of that money that was in that buy down account. So that's the that's the basic idea of how that works. It's a way to save the buyer, uh, reduce their monthly payment for the next two or three years until they have an opportunity to refinance. Okay, so we're familiar with like buying down the rate. Yes, a permanent rate buy down, as so, we call that. So this isn't buying down the rate. You're still you're still getting that market rate. That's it. You are your permanent rate is still fixed at whatever you're locked in at originally. And, and it's not like we we see these arms these. Adjustable. Adjustable where they're like a lower amount and then they're going to go up to a, a higher amount. Correct. So this rate is still locked in for, for 30 for thir- years. For 30 years, yes. 30-year okay. fixed rate. It's just that you have... Reduced that, monthly payment reduced, each month. They're kind of supplemented that. That's so exactly you, So you're it. not getting taxed later down the, the in the in the end because you're still making that payment this is, based off that rate. Exactly. This okay. is still it's all this is is a seller concession. So if you're doing a 321 buy down, you have to be putting down at least 10% or more because you have to be able to get on a conventional loan. Okay. I'm sorry, this is for a conventional, so a conventional loan. loan. Yeah, conventional loan, 10% or greater, you can get up to 6% concession from the seller. So that's how you got to get that to get that large cuz if you did a $400,000 mortgage, okay? And you wanted to do a 321 buy down, that's going to cost you close to $18,000 in it to do that. That money has to come from the seller. It can't come from the lender, can't come from the buyer, has to come from the seller in the form of a seller concession. So you get that $18,000, that's going to be uh what uh, four and a half percent or so, if my math is right, okay. uh, somewhere in that range in a concession, right? So you need more than 3% concession, which is the max you can get on a, if you put less than 10% down. So you have to have at least 10% down to be able to get that 6% or somewhere over 3% concession. Okay. And is that, that's uh, the same with any conventional, right? The that's a, that's just Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac. Yeah, okay. that's, that's standard conventional financing. FHA is different. FHA allows for, uh, what, up to 9% concessions, I believe. And and you can do uh, buy-downs for, really, for any type of loan, for conventional FHA. Um, either one of those is fine. Okay. So let's go back to that 321 yeah. or 2-1 buy-down, uh, whichever one you use. So now, like, that person still has to qualify for that amount, right? Great question. Even though, because their their payment is seven hundred dollars less, they got to qualify for the full Absol- payment. Absolutely, okay. absolutely. So uh, to address that, yes, you you would qualify with the uh, the permanent the actual permanent interest rate. So let's just say the six and a half percent. All right. Um, and it, it, that's just gravy that you get the lower monthly payment. That's more of just a personal grade. I keep my payment low. Personally, when I'm talking to my borrowers, uh, we're having a conversation about you need to you. You don't want to do this like like years ago, what people did with arms, like you were talking about, where you took that real low monthly payment and that low interest rate on an arm that was going to adjust in three or five years solely because that's what you could afford at the time. Right. You got to make sure that they can afford the monthly payment as it is at the six and a half percent. Maybe it's not quite as comfortable, and that's not an uncommon thing these days, just because of affordability, like we talked about. But they can make that payment. They do the buy down to get that re- that uh, relief on that payment for the first few years. But what I also do is I'm also always going to look at what does that permanent buy down look like. What if we get eighteen thousand dollars from the seller? What can we buy that interest rate down to on a permanent basis? Oh, okay. At a scenario where a, a client got, got about that, about eighteen thousand dollars, and we looked at um, you know doing a buy down compared to a permanent rate buy down, and permanently, I think we were able to get, if I recall, down to like four point nine nine percent. He said, "That I'd rather have that. I'd rather do that than the buy down." So, just just running some numbers, doing some math, and figuring out for each individual yeah. what makes more sense. I understand that. So. Four point nine nine nine, so roughly five percent. Yeah, five percent. Let's go. And on a permanent cause, basis, because the two three one buy down is year one. Mm-hmm. Year is like the seven hundred yep. off, but year two maybe five hundred. So you're going to actually be paying. Oh, it goes up every month. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm glad you brought that. You didn't really clarify. So that. year one, you're you're paying seven hundred dollars less out of your pocket. Yep. Because of being supplemented by that exactly. separate account. Year two, you're paying two hundred dollars more a month, roughly. And year three, maybe another you know, maybe five hundred. So maybe you're, maybe you're saving two hundred, three hundred dollars a month off the normal payment. Okay, 
And then so you're. So each you, month that payment's ratcheting up because that the, yeah. You know, yeah. The, the, the payment based off of that lower interest rate essentially is is going up each month. So again, it's just a payment based on the equivalent of a, again, 3.5%, then the next year 4.5%, right. and then 5.5%. So it's not, you know, basically you've got the bar the seller paying about $18,000 of your mortgage for you over the next three years. That's the okay. best way to look at it there. Or if you did a 2-1 buy down, it might be only, maybe you only need, you know, ten dollars or $12,000 from the seller. Okay. And then you just got the two years reprieve. So obviously people are doing this mm -hmm. to help to kind of, uh, I mean, housing is going up. We're not seeing any, any kind of depreciation mm -hmm. throttling back really. Um, so the interest rates make the payment higher. So this is a way to get in. That's it. But after this three, two, two, one buy down, you know, people are doing this because they're hoping that interest rates yes. drop, right? Yep so that then they can refinance exactly so what happens let's say let's say interest rates are high right now and then something happens some catalyst next year and all of a sudden boom rates drop to like four percent yep great and question this three two one buy down what so what happens are they stuck in this can they you know yep. this money's in this account what, what happens with all this yeah so um at Guardian Mortgage, what we do, that money that's in that buy-down account is the borrower's money. So if something like that happened and all of a sudden a year from now we can refinance and interest rates were at four and it made sense to do, we're going to take the money that's in that buy-down account and apply it to their principal to reduce their monthly pay, uh, their principal balance. Okay. So so they get that money, goes right towards the principal of the loan, reduce the loan amount. Okay. And then what happens if, like, uh, you know, someone's here... A lot of people moving here to Arizona working remotely and the, you know, their job says, Hey, no more. You got to get back to the office, uh, in Washington state. Cause we see a lot of people from Washington coming here and then they got to sell the house. What, what happens? Yep. Same, same thing, same thing. That money is there. So that goes, uh, so when that loan is being paid off, that remaining money in that buy down account goes to, uh, pay down the principal of the current mortgage. Okay. So they they don't lose it. So they net they, they don't net. lose it. Okay. It's their money. That's awesome. And I've 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 heard I believe I read that lenders can go either way on that. So oh, okay. always ask your lender, any whoever you're working with, you ask them what those exact questions. What if I pay this off early? What if we refinance? What happens to that money? Because if the lender does not pass that back along to the buyer, I mean, it's a that's a lot of money to give yeah. up right there. So yeah, because we, we typically see like in concessions normally and then they go yep. to the lender and then they're just gone it's just used up right there exactly yeah. this is different so, so this is different where it's actually the buyer's money in this instance yep and the buyer will get it over that it's a it's a set period exactly of time over that they get it two years or three years or if they pay it off early again speaking from the term yeah. of the guardian mortgage we give that back to them like and, somebody and gets uh, inheritance they pay their pay it off yeah and then that's their money. Exactly. Okay. So they don't lose it, which is great. All right. And again, that's I can only speak to Guardian on that one. Right. Yeah. So so there's different uh, situations. So so you want to make sure you're out there asking questions like this of your lender because these these things are confusing. So like us as agents, we really help people with you know we work with negotiations, we handle that end, but we like to partner with good lenders because. There's, this is complicated. This this is like out of our realm. We know enough, but you know, to ask questions, but the lender, you know, just like title does their own work and the lender, having a good lender is really key right now. And and what's key about that as well is that you, you've got to be on, we got to have these conversations so that you know what you need to be asking for. If a client, I mean, there might be a, a, a buyer that is just adamant, like I want to use one of these three, two, one buy downs. So you obviously have to negotiate that into your offer. And right, um, we have so, to know ahead know, of time. No, exactly. And the amount is key as well. The uh, We need... Typically, it's 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 good to usually ask for if you need seventeen thousand eight hundred dollars, you know, you might want to be asking for eighteen five, just because things change, numbers change, and it all those all that money for the buy down has to come from the seller. So it's better to just get it all done properly right up front, have enough money oh, up front, okay. rather than going back and doing addendums later on down yeah, the road. Because so, we do not want to have to renegotiate. No, no, you, no, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So okay, well, very good. Yeah, thanks a lot for explaining that because I everybody's talking about it lenders and and just say oh yeah but well, honestly like 
I was like, hey, I, I'm not real familiar with this. And so thanks for coming. Are you now? And, yeah, I'm All right, now good, I get it. Good. So <laughs> But yeah, it's it's important to know because like Chris said, when we're negotiating and we're you know, the the agents putting together the offer, you gotta know how you're gonna go in. You can't just uh, you know, go online, click an agent, click a a lender, get all online stuff because if if you don't have all those things working together, it can really mess you up. Yeah, you need a team because right now, you know, and, and you can always say, oh, more than ever, but really, it's been years we've been having this this situation, and I think we're gonna have uh, for years to come. You know, we have low inventory still. Yes, so absolutely, got to be prepared. Find some good people and uh, work with them. So if you guys have any questions for me or for Chris. Uh, reach out and uh, let us know. We're happy to help. We do consultations with our clients in our end. I know Chris does the same. So we answer all those questions and we can put together a game plan for you. All right. Well, thanks all a right. lot, Chris. Thanks for having me, Rick. Appreciate it.